The real cause of inner emptiness, lack of love, is the real cause of inner emptiness. We'll talk about the perfect love and how it can complete your life and make it beautiful. We'll also discuss who you should trust more, technology or human, and how that almost caused tension between a couple. This is also our last episode covering the gems from the great book, The Disease and the Cure by Ibn Qayyum, Rahimahullah. Who or what you trust more, your spouse or WhatsApp? Recently, I was with a friend of mine and uh, he, was work- he was talking to me. He has his phone in his hand. We were going for the prayers. So a lot of different things were happening. He's talking to me at the same time. His phone is buzzing. He is he's seeing other people's messages and he's responding to some messages. Anyways, we go and we pray Aisha and then we come back. So it turns out that his wife has messaged him about something. And uh, as you know, that WhatsApp shows the notification or the read status of a message. So as per that, you know, it showed the wife that the husband has read the message and it was something important the husband was supposed to do, but he didn't do it. And the wife thought that he had seen the message and he ignored it. Um, what was actually happening was that as he was talking to me and uh, his, front, his phone was buzzing, his phone was buzzing and uh, he may have like accidentally opened the window and may not have looked at it. So as for WhatsApp or technology, it's almost only taking a look at that, hey, was the screen open? That does not necessarily mean the person actually read the message. So this is just an example of how in life sometimes you may have conflicting uh, messaging and one may think that the other person is lying, but actually both people can be speaking the truth. Uh, It's just that the meaning is different. So yes, the wife saw the notification from the WhatsApp that the message was read, which only meant that the window was open. It does not really mean that the person actually read the message. And the husband was right as well that, hey, I haven't seen your message. So that's just a very simple, basic example. And there are many other examples of that that can happen in your life where you cannot really combine the two narratives. But often there is a narrative. So it's really about trust. If you trust someone enough, you try to dig deeper or just trust the person that, hey, you know, although it doesn't seem to, it, it seems contradicting, but there is no contradiction, right? Just as we saw in this example. Anyways, that was just a side lesson to take a look at in your relationships and has there been issues or cases in which you uh, mistrusted someone because of a different alternative narrative. So let's move into the main topic of today's episode, which is love. So recently I have been approached by several people and they come into the masjid or they came in for coaching and they want to discuss the emptiness or the feeling of emptiness in their life. And some of them have been very successful in their life. Uh, They have amazing careers, you know, their own businesses, a lot of wealth and so on and so forth. But they still find that emptiness. And this is not something unusual. We see that in the news all the time that a lot of people who are very successful from the worldly metrics in terms of wealth, finances, fame, power, status, um, love, even, you know, being a celebrity, but they still feel that emptiness. So a lot of the people that, you know, realize that emptiness, and we talked about it last time as well in our last episode, that sometimes this is a sign and this opens the door for the person to connect with their creator and this shapes their world uh, in a way that their life in this dunya, in this world becomes much better as well as the life of the hereafter. And obviously some people ignore that sign or they try to uh, suppress that by taking, you know, other forms of medications or drugs or substance abuse or just 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 raising their bar higher changing the milestone and so on and so forth so if you think about it the the meaning of the word ibadah the meaning of the word uh, worship is basically complete love along with submission and humility to the creator so that is the essence why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and if you think about who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Right, and you you distance that. You don't think about what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has done for us, but just in Himself, who He is, right? And you try to reflect on His names and attributes. How powerful He is! How beautiful He is! How He has created these amazing, beautiful 
things in this world, the oceans, the seas, the lakes, the mountains, the greenery, the pasture, um, the animal kingdom, the beautiful animals, uh, amazing thing and the amazing phenomena, sunrise, sunset, rain, clouds, sunshine, snow. So just from that angle, if you just look, take a look at his creation and the phenomena and even the, the process of creation, the process of a, a, a chicken, a chick being born or hatching out of an egg, you know, how that chick gets uh, the blood, uh, the oxygen into the bloodstream and so on and so forth. As you reflect these things and as you reflect on the animal kingdom or, any, or the human body or the human body organs and the way they function, you kind of appreciate the details and the beauty and the sophistication of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is demonstrated by the mercy that we have for each other, the mercy that the animals have among each other, and so on and so forth. So as you reflect on that, you realize who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, and then you realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to create me. He is the one who has blessed me with whatever I have, right? So we're not talking about the more or the less, but any bounty that we have. Your ability to hear and be able to communicate with people. That's a great blessing in itself, right? We do not have any right or authority to demand that it's a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Or the ability to see, or the ability to speak, the ability to touch the ability to taste food and whatever food that we have available and the and the feeling of thirst that we have and then how it's quenched by a cold drink. All these amazing things are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we enjoy. So as the one uh, thinks about all these beauties and bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we start reflecting on these things and that should help us to think and fall in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have that complete love and submission to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his perfect wisdom and knowledge and because of these commands being for our own benefit and him rewarding us for obeying him in those commands so such an amazing Lord that we have and that builds that amazing connection and we kind of start falling in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ إِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الدُّرُّ فَإِلَيْهِ تَجْأَرُونَ So meaning that any bounty, any blessing, any ni'mah that we have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not have any foundational or fundamental rights to it. It's, from a, it's a favor, a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when some sort of a heart, some, some sort of a hardship touches us, then we start like, you know, asking him or begging him. And that is especially when we see that nobody else from the human can help us in that. So something uh, amazing to reflect. Now, another thing to reflect here is that, look, anybody in this world that loves you, from the creation of Allah, whoever loves you, there is essentially a need of them being met by loving you. There's a personal benefit, whether it's obvious or not, there's a personal benefit. There is a there's a feeling, there's a return for them, whether it be an emotional return, a worldly return or whatever, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you for yourself. He chose to create you. He chose to create you in this time and age, in the circumstances that you are. It's not a random act. And there's an author that's uh, uh, narrated by, uh, that's mentioned by Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah in his book, and Allah alam about his authenticity, but uh, as it says that, uh, oh my slave, everyone, everyone desires you for himself, right? There's this own benefit there, but I desire you, I want you for your own self. So Allah alam about the authenticity of that, but something to think about, right? And he mentions a point here that how could it be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all these opportunities, these blessings. And even with that, he he comes down on, on the last third of the night and he asks us, is there anyone who's asking me so I'll give him or asking for forgiveness so I'll forgive him and so on and so forth, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that, but only astajib lakum, ask me, call on to me, make dua to me and I'll respond to you. And so many other things, right? So how can it be that we are not shy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being who he is and the amazing and magnificent he is and at the same time, we are turning away from him and we are turning away from him and we are falling and being engaged and being uh, occupied by love of someone else other than him. Something very, uh, something we think about and something reflect upon and something to feel shy from. 
So this is something that we need to think about. So once we realize who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, how much we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will help us to focus in salah. That would help us to rush to salah. That would help us to find calmness and peace and tranquility in salah. That would help us to feel enjoyment in salah. And that would encourage us and lead us to not disobey Allah for the pleasure of the creation. And think about how generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how he gives and gives and gives and how he forgives and how he still gives when we disobey him and how he subhanahu wa ta'ala always protect us and there's no one that can harm us except by his will. There is no one who can benefit us except by his will. And from his bounties is that he has sent down the books and the messengers to us so that we can be guided on how to worship him and how to live our life in terms of our relationships with each other, our relationships with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our financial matters and so on and so forth. And how he facilitates us to do good deeds and how he forgives and wipes out our bad deeds, how he responds to our du'as and how he um, forgives our mistakes and how he covers our sins and how he covers our shortcomings and how he removes harm and hardships from us and how he responds to our desires and our, our, our uh, dire need. So he's the one who is most deserving to be remembered and mentioned, the most deserving to be thanked, the most deserving to be worshipped, the, the most deserving to be submitted to the most deserving to be praised. He's the one who loves us more than our own parents. There's no one that can love us more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that cares for us more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how he facilitates and guides and gives us all these opportunities towards guidance. And he's the king. There's no partner with him. And he is the one that has no child, no son or no daughter. And he's the one who will remain and while every other person, every other creation will die and perish. And he is the one that we obey by his facilitation. And he is the one who is aware and knowledgeable when we disobey him. And he is the one who is Ghani, who is not in need of anyone, but everyone is in need of him. So once we realize that how beautiful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, and that if we take uh, one step towards him, he will facilitate more and more obedience from us. So that becomes this beautiful life that we live in. And that is kind of an indication and hint of the life of the Salihin, the one, the righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how their uh, lives are beautiful. With that, they would long, they would look towards meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the prayers in this world and meeting and seeing him in the hereafter. So that is something that they look forward to and they enjoy in this world by the kalam of Allah, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's something to think about how much we are in love with the book of Allah, how much time do we spend in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reading, listening, or reflecting upon it. So these are some of the indicators and, and a sign for how beautiful our life can be once we start falling into the real love, the love that does not diminish. Because your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will exist when you die, in the life of grave and, and the hereafter. Every other relationship will perish. And that is where the emptiness comes from because we start thinking that we are self-sufficient in one way or the other. So once we realize how much powerful, how much loving, how much amazing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how much we are in need of it, the well, life would be different. So some action points around there is basically reflect on what you focus on, reflect on what you desire, how you compromise the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, they tell them, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ If you love Allah, then فَاتَّبِعُونِ Then follow me, follow the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah will love you. So making dua for that, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us for his loves and taking the means, sacrificing, sacrificing our own desires over the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until our desires are aligned with the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, make this happen for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with his love and increase us in it and make us take the means to achieve that. Um, this is basically also an ending of the book uh, that we were covering, the book by Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah. Obviously, it's a great book, and you may uh, find the book online. There's an English translation of it. I'm not sure if there's a, a great translation available, but uh, definitely check it out. There are obviously other uh, longer lectures around the book that people have done. We have just taken some uh, major points from the book, some gems, and applied some contemporary examples with those um, points until next time please do let us know how how you benefited what you liked what you did not like which topics or which problems said or which areas would you like us to address in the future uh, episodes whether it be podcasts or videos and we'd love to hear from you if you have applied any of those things and how it has benefited you yeah.